Yo guys, it's the Jcraft channel today with another video and this will be a review video of this, a 3D printer that is another one that I got, which I gotta show you why it's better than the first 3D printer I got. So, well, I guess this is from the last shorts video, but uh, this is the Prusa i3 Mark III S Plus, and uh, I'm comparing it to the Ender 3 V2 that I tried for a year and determined this is a better printer for me. Um, so as you can see, it's in the middle of printing something for another project. But um, I also got the Prusa box for this, which is a very nice enclosure. Uh, it has this plexiglass all around, and then these little hinges that you have to 3D print yourself for like these this stuff and whatever. But all of the metal comes with the kit and the plexiglass too, so it's not much that you have to 3D print. And as you can see here, I have some PLA filament. Uh, there is where it says Prusa. And you can see it's printing right now. So, um, as you can see, it has like a little filter there and like housing. And so originally, well, it's just garbage filament. Originally, this screen would have been attached to the front of the Prusa here, but the cables are long enough and there's some cable management that the files were available for for this enclosure so with this enclosure you don't have to like design anything yourself it's all in the files they give you so uh with that said you can see uh here's the hot end temperature here's the bed temperature here's the percentage complete here's the name of the file so 5 amp hour battery dot g code. Uh, here's the height that it is. Uh, here's the extrusion rate or the speed at which it's printing. And here's the remaining time. I found that this remaining time estimate is super, super, super accurate. And the reason for that is the Prusa slicer comes up with a time and it puts that in the g code file. And so this just uses that time and counts down and it is super accurate. So it will be probably exactly three minutes and 18 seconds, or three hours and 18 minutes that it will take before it's done. I wish it were three minutes, but eh, whatever. It's fairly fast. And this compared to the Ender is on like almost every print, probably two or three hours or more faster which is very nice because I don't have to wait as long for this. Um, I think one of the main reasons that is the case is you can see here, uh, these are actually custom designed motors, Depper motors, uh, with Prusa branding. You can see this is one of them right here for the extruder. And so it uses a belt system uh, connected to pulleys on the stepper motors. And with these linear rods, you can see that it can advance pretty fast to the different parts on the print. So you see it can go pretty fast compared to the Ender, which is, I think, pretty amazing how it can go this fast. Um, another major difference between this printer and the Ender that I showed probably a year or two ago, I forget, is this has a direct drive extruder design so the filament comes directly from the spool here uh through the case but that's a thing i that is for the case itself uh it comes directly to the in this top of the extruder and then the motor for the extruder is right here so instead of having the motor over here with a bowden tube that goes to the uh hot end the motor for the extruder is right here. So this helps when you're printing like flexible materials or anything like that. And if you have to take out this filament and change it, it's much less filament that has to get taken out and purged every time you want to replace it, which is nice. Um, you can also see the main board is back here, which is very nice. Uh, instead of being under the printer, which was a pain to get to with the Ender, 
So this is easy if you want to do anything with it, add a Raspberry Pi. You can do all that. It's really easy. You don't have to take it and flip it on its side, which is a pain. Um, another difference with this printer, which I'll show right now, is if I jam intentionally this linear rod from moving, let's see if I can... Well, <laughs> oops, that was a fail that I intentionally caused. Um, so I'll demonstrate that again, because that did not go as planned. Uh, but I can show you the main printer menu now. Uh, so you can go through all these. Uh, the one thing that I don't quite like about this is uh, auto homing is under calibration, not settings. It's not too big of a deal, but I think it's a little weird that auto home is right here instead of being in settings, but that's fine. It works either way. So I've preheated this. Let me start. Oops, I pressed the wrong thing. Let me start this on this file, checking file, and now it's heating. And so there it goes. And now it will do a bed level and you can change this. I've changed this to probe 49 points of the bed. So you can see. It just goes to every one of those 49 points on the bed. Usually it comes from the factory as three points on the bed, but I wanted extreme accuracy, so I set it to 49. Um, so that's a seven by seven grid. You can also have a five by five grid or a three by three grid. Uh, three by three is standard, as I was saying. So you can see it's taking a measurement of how far the probe is from the bed on each one of those points. So every single time it prints, it has the exact same layer height on the first layer. And you can see that is quite perfect right there. You can see this is perfectly adhered to the bed. So even this is nice, the little purge uh, line. So you can see that first layer is perfect and it always is perfect which is very nice about this printer because you don't have to adjust the little bedded or bed level knobs under it and all that which is a big pain so it's a very nice feature um i've noticed about this printer it comes with a lot of features that like stock from the factory that were upgrades for the ender so for example, the filament runout sensor, uh, uh, all metal hot end that can go up to 300 degrees Celsius, automatic bed leveling, dual Z axis, um, a PEI coated bill plate. Uh, yeah, I'm trying to think of, oh, it also has, if the power goes out unexpectedly, it has power recovery, which is very nice. Um, it has crash detection, which is what I was meaning to show you, but <laughs> I moved the extruder, which was my bad. That's That no, doesn't normally happen. Um, so let's see, if it's moving this way, you can see I jammed it, it detected, it says extruder crash, it rehomes itself, and it goes right back to printing, just like that. So I've had this come in handy way more times than it actually seems because it seems like uh, it wouldn't really be like how many times would something be in the way and it would crash into it, you know? But when I had the filament spool outside of the enclosure when I was still printing the pieces for it, um, usually, well, I figured out this would happen sometimes when I was not watching the printer the filament would slightly jam up and try to pull the extruder with it when the extruder is trying to move. And this would detect it and rehome and keep printing. And that saved so many prints, which is very nice. Um, so as you can hear, the motors are just a little bit louder 
than the Enders, but they have uh, stepper motor drivers that have current sensing capabilities for the stepper motors, which means you don't need a li physical limit switch. It just measures the current as it goes. And when the current peaks, it knows it hit the uh, edge of something. And in the case when it's printing, it knows it hit something or is getting pulled or something and it rehomes and it keeps going. Um, so this printer has many safety features, which I like uh, fail safe features that have come in handy so much that I think it's it should be stock on every single printer. But of course, this printer is a little more expensive than something like the Ender, uh, which this for the kit is $750, which is a little bit like pricey for a 3D printer, it seems. But the amount of quality and features this comes with stock from the factory, I think it's worth every single penny of that price. So it's just amazing all of this, uh, the quality, like these nice thick linear rods and all that. I think it's definitely worth it. Uh, whereas something like the Ender, which is a little more inexpensive, uh, which is only like 300 or so dollars, only has like one Z-axis motor, which can become out of level on the Z-axis. Um, it does have a 32-bit uh, motherboard, whereas this has an 8-bit. But for 3D printing, I've noticed zero performance differences between the two. So it's not really needed to have a 32-bit motherboard. Um, this one has, of course, the direct drive extruder, as I was saying, filament runout sensor. Uh, it even uses the extruder motor to determine, or it measures the current on it to see if the filament's getting jammed up. And it can tell you and wait for you to fix the problem, which is another problem I had many times on the Ender. Um, just everything about this printer is so much more quality than the Ender. I think if you're getting a 3D printer, just go with this one because it has automatic bed leveling. It has all these fail safe features that it's just like, do you want 3D printing to be a hobby or do you want it to be a tool like your 3D printer? So yeah, as I was saying, I think this printer right here is well worth the money because it just has all the upgrade features built in and that's a major good thing about this printer because not only do you not have to find and buy all those upgrades like the all metal hot end or the dual z axis or the filament runout sensor or any of that but it's also really well integrated into the operating system or the firmware of this printer so it always works like if the power cuts out i know for a fact that that will go into power recovery and will save my print or like something jams the printer i know it will detect that and either wait for me to like fix something or like home itself and keep printing which is it's just a very nice thing to have that, which I was missing with the Ender. So as you can see, I think the Prusa is a very great 3D printer. This video is not in any way sponsored. I bought the printer with my own money. I saved up that large amount of money for it. And I saved up the like $250 for the enclosure, which I think also is well worth it. And so it is expensive for the two of those, the enclosure and the printer, but being able to just start a print and not even having to watch the first layer come down on the bed and whatever, it's just a very nice thing. So yeah, there's my little lecture about uh, how nice the Prusa 3D printer is, but in all honesty, I think it's well worth the price. And if you're looking for a 3D printer, I would consider researching the Prusa i3 Mark III S Plus. And yeah, thanks for watching this video and please like, share, and subscribe. And yeah.